Okay, well, now we know how to look at any atom and decide what its hybridization is. We can look at an atom and decide whether it's sp3, sp2, or sp hybridized. Uh, and the next thing we have to do is we have to ask, what does it mean to be sp hybridized? Uh, what does it mean to be sp3 hybridized? What does it mean to be sp2 hybridized? What does it mean to be sp hybridized? So that will be the next topic that we talk about, trying to understand a little bit more clearly what those terms mean. Uh, and this is something that we have to do before we can get to our main job, which is thinking about Huckel's rule and counting the pi electrons. Uh, so before we can start thinking about Huckel's rule and counting the pi electrons, we have to still do a little bit more background work and talk about what does sp3, sp2, and sp mean. Okay, so to start with, let me ask you a question. What are the valence orbitals of an unhybridized atom? I'll ask that question again. What are the valence orbitals of an unhybridized atom? Think about that for a second. Now, this is a question that I think you know the answer to, although you might not have really understood the question. Uh, but uh, once I put the answer on the board, I think you'll see uh, that you really already knew the answer. What are the valence orbitals of an unhybridized atom? Well, by the second semester of OCHEM, you should know that if you have an unhybridized atom, it has an s orbital, and it has three p orbitals. So again, by the second semester of OCHEM, people understand that when you take an unhybridized atom, the normal unhybridized orbitals are one s orbital and three p orbitals. So this is what a un hybridized, what the unhybridized orbitals look like. Now I'll ask you another question. What are the valence orbitals of an sp3 hybridized atom? What are the valence orbitals of an sp3 hybridized atom? Think about that. Let's work that out. What does it mean when we say that something is sp3 hybridized? We mean that it's mixing together one of its s orbitals and three of its p orbitals. So we're taking the original orbitals and we're mixing together one of the s orbitals and three of the p orbitals, which means we're mixing everything because that's all that we had. And how many sp3 orbitals do we get out of that? Well, here we use the idea that you may have heard of, of conservation of orbitals. Since we are mixing together four orbitals, since we're mixing together four orbitals, we should get out four hybridized orbitals. sp3, 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 and a fourth, sp3. I put in some commas here to separate uh, the orbitals from each other. So again, in an sp3 hybridized atom, we're mixing together all of the original orbitals, all four, so we should get four hybridized orbitals out. So these are the valence orbitals of an sp3 hybridized atom. Now I'm going to ask you another question. What are the valence orbitals of an sp2 hybridized atom? That question again is, what are the valence orbitals of an sp2 hybridized atom? Try to work that out. Well, now we'll go through that. What does sp2 mean? It means that we're mixing together one of the s orbitals and two of the p orbitals. So now you can see that I'm putting these brackets around only two of the p orbitals and the s orbital. This p is not included in the brackets because we're only mixing together two of the p orbitals. Now we're mixing together three orbitals, so how many mixed orbitals do we get out? Well again, we use conservation of orbitals. Since we're mixing these three orbitals, that produces three hybridized orbitals. sp2 sp2 and sp2. 
Since we mixed together three orbitals, we get out three hybridized orbitals. And what other orbitals are we going to have here? Well, again, we use conservation of orbitals. Since we started with four orbitals total, we have to end up with four orbitals total. So there must be one more orbital I haven't written down here. What is it? Well, you can see that when we mixed these three orbitals together, we didn't touch this p orbital. So that p orbital must still be around. So besides the three hybridized orbitals, we also have one unhybridized p orbital left over. So this is the answer to my question. I had asked you, what are the valence orbitals of an sp2 hybridized atom? Well, the answer is that it has three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one unhybridized p orbital. Well, you can probably guess what my next question to you is going to be. The next question is, what are the valence orbitals of an sp hybridized atom? What are the valence orbitals of an sp hybridized atom? Go ahead and pause the tape for a second, pause the video, and try to work that out. Let's answer the question. Well, I'll erase this bracket. Now, since we're thinking about an sp hybridized atom, we know that we're mixing one of the s's and one of the p's. So now I'm going to put a bracket around only one of the s's and only one of the p's. And how many mixed orbitals do we get out? Well, we use conservation of orbitals. Since we're mixing together two orbitals, we're going to get two mixed orbitals out. One sp hybridized orbital and a second sp hybridized orbital. We're mixing together two orbitals, so we get two mixed orbitals out. What other orbitals are there? Well, we know there's always got to be four orbitals total from conservation of orbitals. And from our bracket here, we can see that when we mixed these two orbitals together, we didn't touch these two p orbitals. These two p orbitals have not been mixed. Therefore, they still remain as unhybridized orbitals. So this is the answer to our question. These are the valence orbitals of an sp hybridized atom. An sp hybridized atom has two sp hybridized orbitals and two unhybridized p orbitals. So this is a very useful table for you to copy down and study and come up with again on your own. And there's some information here that I think a lot of people maybe not, might not be clear about as they're going through OCHEM. Uh, for example, I think a lot of people don't realize that when we say that an atom is sp2 hybridized, what we really mean is that it has three sp2 hybridized orbitals, and that it also has one unhybridized p orbital. And again, when someone says that we have an sp hybridized atom, I think many students don't realize that that really means that there's two sp orbitals, and that there's still two unhybridized p orbitals. And so, by the way, there really are no exceptions to this pattern here. Any sp hybridized atom has two p orbitals. Any sp2 hybridized atom has one p orbital. And here's something that's very important to notice. How many p orbitals does an sp3 hybridized atom have? How many p orbitals does an sp3 hybridized atom have? None. There's no p orbitals left because all three of the original p orbitals have been used up to make the sp3 hybridized orbitals. So when we have an sp3 hybridized atom, it has no p orbitals left. It's easy to get a little confused about that because you might say, well, gee, there's a bunch of p's over here. But remember that even though we're writing down the letter p, these are not p orbitals, they're sp3 orbitals. Just because the, uh, just because the symbol for sp3 orbitals has the symbol p, don't let that confuse you. Keep in mind that these are not p orbitals. If something is a p orbital, we just write the letter p by itself. These are not p orbitals. Instead, they're called sp3 orbitals. So what have we accomplished so far in these videos? Well, remember that we started by figuring out how to decide what the hybridization of an atom is. We can decide whether an atom is sp3 hybridized, sp2 hybridized, or sp hybridized. Remember that we reviewed a rule and an exception for determining hybridization. And what we just finished doing is now we figured out what it means to be sp3 hybridized or sp2 hybridized or sp hybridized. When we use these terms, we're really describing all four of the valence orbitals of the atom. So here are our three patterns. And uh, let's 
point out what our big upshot is here. First of all, sp3 hybridized atoms don't have any p orbitals. sp3 hybridized atoms don't have any p orbitals. And sp2 hybridized atoms have only one p orbital. That's another important point, so I'll repeat that. An sp2 hybridized atom has one and only one p orbital. sp hybridized atoms uh, are generally not very important when you're working with Huckel's rule and aromatic compounds, but I thought we'd go through that just for completeness.